Hi right, guys, we're back at the shop again. And we're actually back on the daybreak from the AC job. My customer has had a uh, motorhome for a couple years now and it's always been tilting. And it's not uncommon for these Class A's, diesel, uh, Class A gas units to uh, lean a little bit. Because uh, I don't see anything wrong with the uh, suspension. So what we're gonna install are some helper uh, springs. Airbags to, the, to most people. Uh, this will allow you to uh, obviously help the, help the, uh, the leaf springs, uh, help with handling a little bit, but because they're independent airbags, you can add air to one side so that it, it levels out the motorhome at the rear. Uh, when there is an issue with uh, like um, handling, suspension, or, uh, or ride comfort, I generally just recommend doing one uh, additional thing at a part of time. So don't add... Uh, Sway, uh, upgraded sway bars, up, upgraded uh, steering stabilizers, uh, airbags, uh, a differential uh, uh, stabilizing bar, all at once. Just do one thing at a time so you can find out what actually uh, is fixing the problem. Because if you do it all at once, you don't know what, caused, what, what if it did anything, or maybe they fought each other. So let's take a look at this. Now this is a Ford F53 chassis. It's a 22,000 gross vehicle weight rating. Uh, now, workhorses actually do have airbags in the front, but not necessarily in the rear. So I hope that's everything we need to know before we go any further. This is just the uh, Firestone airbag kit. Uh, I think it was a two, 2270. I don't know. What does it say? Oh, 2170. So the first step, Obviously, it's going to be to mount these brackets. You got the lower bracket here. You got the airbag and the top bracket. Now, on the instructions, it'll kind of show you where it goes. On the driver's side, it goes just on the front side, which you won't be able to see very well, but that leaf spring support you can kind of see is right about there. So it doesn't ride right over the top of the axle, just off to the front of it. Uh, but basically the first step, because we're going to have to drill a lot of holes, is my least favorite step, is to take these wheels off. So I have to take the wheels off first. Okay, now first and foremost, maybe I'm an RV technician, but I am still a technician. So I'm always going to try to find the easier way to do something. So I'm going to see if this works. So rather than take the wheels off, I took the wheel, uh, the fender off. You'll see it laying right there. So it's actually pretty easy to take off, so I'm going to hope that means I can just work over the top of the tires. Um, that's my big hope. What I will say is that for whatever reason, Firestone couldn't tell me, none of my suppliers could tell me, is this 2170 kit stipulates on it that it's not compatible with Thor motorhomes. Damon is technically a Thor motorhome, but I don't know why, if they're delineating between Thor itself or Damon. So I'm going to see if this... Uh, is compatible or not because they couldn't tell me why and I couldn't figure it out all right so I've just mocked up the top bracket right now by putting the bolts on the airbag and then I just have the lower mount here so they're again just showing the lower mount this right here just goes over the front leaf spring u-bolt and then uh, somehow this all lines up right sure I mean, it says there's existing holes, but I didn't see any existing holes. All right, let's put this in first. All right, so that's in place right there. Looks pretty good. All right. Get the airbag on the bracket. Put it into place. And... Any holes lined up that I can see? I mean, there's a big, big hole, but I don't think that's going to line up. I don't see any holes lining up, short of maybe that one, but that's not where it's supposed to go. So I might be drilling a lot of holes. 
Now we have a square axle. It's kind of hard to see, but it's square. And so it wants me to use those mounting holes for the square axle. So those mounting holes are going to be uh, let's see. Huh, it's weird. It seems pointless. But okay. Alright, so those instructions weren't very good, right? So I just put it up in place, set it where it looked like it needed to go, and then I made a mark with a marker. And then with that, I could line up to where which hole lined up best. So hopefully if I put this in place, everything should be good. Oof. Well, I really should probably get a zip tying at that cable out of the way. Okay. I mean, that seems pretty close right there. Right? Keep that level to the frame. I think this is looking pretty good. I'll look again and see that bottom hole is pretty level with that sway bar mount. Okay, linkage. So that's just showing it fairly in between those two. It seems to be right where I would have put it. And I think I should be able to drill this without taking these wheels off. Because I can drill the front ones pretty easily. The back ones I should be able to at least mark and then go from the other side and drill from that side. Right above the differential. So, so far I don't see why this wouldn't work. I'm going to get the lower uh, carriage bolts put in the mount here to secure it to the leaf spring. And then uh, that way, I won't have to worry about this thing moving around on me as I drill these holes. Okay, so I didn't point it out. We're just putting the carriage bolt, just like it says in the picture there. Uh, where's the picture? There's a picture there. So we're just putting the carriage bolt down through there. Then there's a lower bracket with the oblong side towards the, uh, the wheel. Uh, these nuts... Our locking nuts, there's a little dimple right there. These are 916. So I just uh, put them down with a uh, ratchet, not a ratchet, an impact, and then I hand did it with a uh, wrench. So there we go. We're mounted in position down there. Airbags mounted. Now I just have to get that level to the frame pretty much and drill some holes. This actually doesn't seem like that bad of an installation. Now, of course, I'm going to go ahead and drill right there. Uh, you know, get one bolt started, then I'll make sure that both sides are level to the frame. That'll give me a good baseline for the other side. But, of course, before you actually drill all the way through, you should always uh, check the other side and make sure you're not going to hit anything important. You know, like wires or brake lines and fuel lines. So. And on this side... It looks like we're gonna be okay, because that's where I drilled. Nothing in the way there, and nothing in the way on that side. So I think we're we're looking pretty good. Let's drill these holes and get this bracket installed. All right, I got the first one drilled out, bolted on right there. I've got that level to the uh, top of the frame there, and I think we're looking pretty good, because this is about right in line with the picture says, right? Ha! Last page. About what I can see is about the nah, front of the... Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's what we're looking at. I think we're looking good. Let's drill some more holes. Alright, with those two installed, now I can just drill out the next two. Uh, it's about two inches down from the top there. And I guess it's a set up so that you could theoretically put another set on the rear. So you have dual air spring airbags. And I haven't put the fitting in yet. I hope I don't regret doing that. Instructions said to do it already, but I didn't know which way I was going to run that. I wonder if I should do that first. Nah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay. I did go ahead and shorten up my 3 8 drill bit. 
give me some clearance there. But I got all four bolts installed. Let's put, hook up the airline fitting right here. Like I said, I'm gonna route it forward here and probably mount the, uh, the Schrader valve where you fill it up with somewhere here. I'll see where this door closes and where you can get to it. I wanna keep it obviously away from the exhaust. I don't wanna fling dirt onto it. So I don't wanna put it facing out in the wheel well, that's for sure. We'll figure this out, All right? Well, I decided to change things up. I didn't like uh, anywhere where that was terminating. So I went ahead and around the airline, back to there, through the compartment wall right there. I'll secure it right there with the, with the P clamp. All right? And then I will actually bring the other one from the, from the other side over to here. And we'll have both of them right behind this compartment door so it'll be easy to get to. And it'll be protected from the weather. So I think we're looking pretty good. All right, so we want 20 PSI in this thing. Uh, about 20 PSI. That's the bare minimum. You should never have these things empty. You need at least 20 PSI. Ah, uh, it's generally what I recommend. So I'm gonna check this thing for leaks and then I'll move on to the next one. You guys see any leaks? I don't see any bubbles. Let's call that good. Let's go to the other side. Now, of course, I still have to do the other side, but for you guys, it'll be maybe a split second. So, lucky for you. I'll assume everything goes okay. You'll know if it doesn't. After that, we'll see about leveling this thing. Okay, with that one, we're, we got the other one installed. I have the airline running to the other side, and I'll show you that in a second. But first, let's get, I guess, a baseline, right? I mean, it's always difficult to measure without having a good, solid level floor. Let's see if we can't see how much movement we have on this thing. So right there, we're at 17 and 7 eighths. And over here we're at uh, 19 and a quarter. So it is leaning to that side. So here's where I put the air valves. This is driver's side, that's passenger side. So let's add some air to the uh, passenger side and I guess see if we can raise it up some. I won't deny I put about 90 pounds on that side. Uh, I guess see if anything changed here. Well, let's see, we're at 18 and 7 8, so we definitely went up an inch. So, yeah, we're just about a half inch off now. I guess I can try to add more. Well, I didn't really drive this too much beforehand, so I couldn't say yay or nay whether I feel like I'm leaning anymore. I can only tell you that I don't feel like I'm leaning. I don't feel like um, the rear end is loose, but I'm gonna get them to a level spot out of the road and I don't know, try to see if I'm fairly level. All right, so this should be the low side. Oof. Calling that 19 and three quarters. This should be the other side. I guess we can stand back some. I don't know, it looks pretty level from my point of view. And of course, I can't say that my measuring points are even very similar. Let's see. So here, we're actually a little bit lower on this side, so I might have overcompensated. So that's good news. That's fantastic news. We can always take air out. Actually, we could take it out pretty easily just by doing it right here. All right. Probably took out too much now. All right, guys, so there it was, the installation. The installation of a uh, of a Firestone a 2170 air ride air coil system. 
Uh, I do have about 90, 95 pounds on the passenger side and only about 30 pounds on the driver's side. Got it pretty level. Honestly, it went pretty well. I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work on a Damon. Even some of the manufa uh, websites I've gone to have said that it fits a Damon Daybreak of this year. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't fit a Thor. I can only imagine they're those uh, smaller Class A's, but I don't know. Yeah, overall, pretty easy installation. I didn't have to take the tires off. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. No leaf springs or anything else. Don't roll away. Don't always oh, roll away. Ride, ride right, sport, uh, ride right, airbag.